Hey everybody, bless you, it's Pastor Ben here. I want you to give some hearts, likes, and do share. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can really share because it's a private group. But what's up everybody, it's been a long time. This is Pastor Ben here in Hawaii. I want you to give some hearts, likes. Welcome to the five days of Hanukkah miracles on this Facebook challenge, amen. It's gonna be incredible, it's gonna be great. So uh, I'm just gonna wait for the room to begin to fill up for a little bit. Rabataboto. Good to see all of y'all, really. I know I've been a little MIA from Facebook and social media, but uh, we're always busy. We're always doing some things. Amen. Give me some thumbs up, hearts, likes, if you see me and hear me well. See me and hear me clearly. Okay. Yeah. This is day one of the five days to Hanukkah miracles, right? Five days of Hanukkah miracles. Hey there, Juan. Hey there, child of Most High, Tina, Maria. Maria, weren't you in Hong Kong for the longest time, Maria? Did you just move? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to start the teaching in a few minutes. Praise God. Hey, Marina. Blessings to you. Haven't moved. Yes. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Yep, and uh, just a few hours, actually, I'll be flying over to Maui. So I'll be in Maui for a few days. So uh, uh, this Facebook challenge, uh, I'll be from uh, Hawaii to back home in California on Friday. So God is good. Hey there, Ivana. Blessings to you. Stuck in the U.S. because of COVID. Well, it's not a bad place to be stuck in. <laughs> well, praise God, people. Blessings to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's uh, quite a small number uh, to start off on a Facebook challenge, but that's fine. I'm so glad you're here. So I'm just going to start. Uh, today, I want to talk about what is Hanukkah. Listen, I want to tell you that this feast is actually a very important feast. It's a very important celebration. In fact, um, in the Gregorian calendar, this is the last Jewish feast um, uh, in this Gregorian calendar. So uh, it's a big time portal. I've, I've come to learn that uh, uh, biblical feasts and these feasts of God are actually time portals. Some will say time portals. They are time portals. Because these are open heaven window seasons where God wants to thrust you forward. And when we embrace the Jewish feasts or the Jewish holidays, the biblical feasts, when we embrace the Jewish feasts, uh, God actually thrusts us forward. The Bible says that these are the feasts of God. Okay, The feast of God. Someone say the feast of God. These are the feast of God. And when you honor his feasts, like you're sitting at the table and God is there at the feast table. When you honor God and you honor his feast, you access and enter in the greater blessings, promises, promotions of God. Amen. So um, so this is actually the last festival or the last feast 
before 2020 ends, before this new, uh, before we enter into the new year. So this is a really important time for us to pray, press in, celebrate, understand revelation. Someone say revelation. Understand the revelations and prepare and get ready for the new year and the next season. Amen. You follow me? So uh, Hanukkah is so important. Um, uh, actually, it, it is not one of the seven feasts of God. Okay. Uh, there are seven feasts of God. Uh, and these are found in the Bible. Okay. These are actually commanded by God saying that you, uh, all the people of Israel, all my people need to celebrate these seven feasts. Okay. So these are actually called not just feasts of God, but biblical feasts. Okay. They're known as the seven biblical feasts of God. Okay. Remember seven feasts for seven days, seven days for seven spirits. So these are known as the seven feasts of God. But Hanukkah is actually not in the seven mandated feast brackets. Does that make sense? So let me ask you this. Um, if Hanukkah is not in the Bible, meaning in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, God commanded the Israelites to celebrate. If God did not command the Israelites to celebrate Hanukkah in the original seven feasts, then why is it important? It's important, number one, because it's written in the Bible. Did you know that? The uh, festival of Hanukkah is written in the Bible, number one. Number two, Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah. Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah, okay? And then number three, uh, it's important because God did something supernatural. And because it's in the Bible and Jesus himself celebrated there's actually something available for us to access as we honor, okay? Um, so, Hanukkah is the last feast um, before we enter to 2021, okay? In the Gregorian calendar. And Hanukkah is not one of the seven feasts. But if you can liken it, it's actually the eighth feast. The eighth, so it's the eighth, okay? Uh, it's number eight feast, all right? Wow. So glad all of you are here, you wonderful 15 people and everybody else that's going to watch the replay. So let's go over to John chapter 10. Because like I said, Hanukkah is actually written in the Bible. So if it's in the Bible, don't you think it's important to understand and to celebrate? And number two, if Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah in the Gospels and the New Testament, don't you think that's important as well? So let's go over to John chapter 10, uh, verse 22, John 10, 22. At that time, the Feast of Dedication, someone say dedication, took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Say never. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them from my hand. I and the Father are one. Someone say amen. This whole passage here, is titled, I and the Father are one. Someone say that. I and the Father are one. If you are in Christ, and Christ is one with the Father, then you are one with Christ and with the Father. So in this title, in this passage. And here in 22, it says, At that time of the Feast of Dedication that took place at Jerusalem, it was winter. Hanukkah in Hebrew means dedication or rededication. Someone say dedication. I pray that you will dedicate your life to the Lord. 
I pray that you will rededicate yourself to Jesus. In this time right now, this feast of Hanukkah, this is a feast, a time. We are in a week, we are in a time frame where we are dedicating ourselves to the Lord. We are rededicating our hearts, our lives to Jesus. Amen. So Hanukkah stands for dedication and rededication. Okay. Hanukkah. Um, so Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah. How do we know? Because uh, it says that he was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So he was in Jerusalem at the Feast of Lights or the Feast of Dedication at the time of Hanukkah. Jesus himself was there. Amen. But of course, uh, Hanukkah is also known as the celebration or the festival of lights. Some say lights. Okay. But we know that Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. So in midst of the festival of light, Jesus himself shows up as the light of the world. Someone say amen. Give me some hearts and lights here. I know many of you are busy writing notes, so bless you. We welcome you today in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll tell you why Hanukkah is also known as the festival of lights in a few moments. Um, shakarababa. Someone say, light me up, Jesus. Someone say, light me up, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Shoo. Um, so right now we are actually in uh, Hanukkah. Okay. Hanukkah is an eight-day celebration. Someone say eight. Okay. Hanukkah is an eight-day celebration. And of course, eight in Hebrew stands for what? New beginnings. So... This feast and festival of Hanukkah, of dedication of lights, is actually about new beginnings. So I prophesy new beginnings to you in Jesus' name. However, Hanukkah actually started this last Friday on the 11th of December. Okay, So right now we are today on the fourth day of Hanukkah. We're in the fourth day of Hanukkah. So somebody wrote to me... Uh, you know, because I felt in my spirit, you know, to do five days of Hanukkah miracles. Of course, even though Hanukkah is eight days long. Uh, but I felt to do five days rather than eight. So I wrote five days of Hanukkah miracles. And somebody responded and said, Hanukkah is eight days. Well, I already know that. Okay, but hear me now. Some would say, but, but. Hanukkah started last Friday, but it ends this Friday, the 18th. So this is the last five days of the eight day feast festival celebration. We are in the last five days of the eight days celebration. But as each day progresses, the glory intensifies. Come on now. The power intensifies. As the days progress, the glory begins to intensify. God begins to show up with more power. More blessings add on. More revelation. More holiness. More fire. More power. More of the grace and the glory of God begins to add on. Robo shakata. As the days progress. So by the time we hit Friday, the last day of Hanukkah, signs and wonders are just going to be all around you. Ridiculous favor, ridiculous miracles. As I've been prophesying, as I heard the word of the Lord, God said, Christmas has come early this year. Amen. Christmas has come early this year. Someone say amen. December is a month of miracles. We are in a time frame of many, many miracles, multitudes of miracles in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. I don't know about you, but I've been experiencing just a plethora of miracles. Just uh, ridiculous miracles. All right? Amen? So I, I release the same grace upon you because that's what God's doing right now. That's what he's doing in this week of Hanukkah, in this month, in this festival, in this season, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Are you all with me today? Shatarab Rabba. Rabba Baba Bande. So Hanukkah started last Friday. On the 11th, but it ends this Friday. And I'm so excited to be with you today and the next four days for this five days of Hanukkah Miracles Challenge. Are you excited? Are you excited? I'm excited. 
Um, today I'm doing an introduction on what is Hanukkah, and uh, we're not even done yet, though. I'm going to do. I'm doing an introduction, opening it up on what is Hanukkah, the importance of Hanukkah. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the spirit of multiplication, believing in multiplication in your life. Okay. On Wednesday we're going to talk about victory, how to overcome the enemy in your mind, in your soul, and uh, your family, and your health. On Thursday we're going to talk about taking back the temple. Okay. And which really has to do with your worship with God and also healing, miracles, healing in your body. So on Thursday, I'm really going to believe for uh, healing, miracles and healing in your body. Just yesterday, I mean, signs, one of the miracles, people were walking. Uh, a lady had swelling in her left leg and the swelling went down. Somebody dropped their cane because, uh, you know, they had a stroke for one ear. They couldn't walk. So, you know, some people's eyes were getting healed. So look at that. People's eyes were getting healed. So ladies, uh, this one lady dropped her glasses. I mean, look how bad these glasses are. I mean, it's horrible. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Look how bad these glasses are. Look, look. You know, people were getting healed yesterday in the meetings, really, uh, the last four days during our Hawaii Glory Convergence at our conference here in Hawaii. And people are just dropping canes and glasses and supernatural weight loss happening, just incredible miracles. So, of course, I'm taking back home to L.A. different apparatuses to testify of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, Thursday, I'm going to really minister in healing miracles in your body. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to talk about multiplication in your finances, uh, things like that. Uh, Wednesday, victory in your mind and your soul. Amen. And on Friday, I'm going to talk about the miraculous. And I'm going to pray and prophesy over everybody. That's live. So some say Hanukkah. Hanukkah in Hebrew means dedication or re dedication amen it also stands for the festival of lights it's eight days long which stands for new beginnings it is a last feast in the gregorian calendar so literally in a sense this is the last big thrust or push before we enter into the new year so get ready get ready get ready you know get your heart ready honor celebrate the lord properly uh purify yourself sanctify yourselves give so bless Forgive. Come on, somebody. Forgive. Let go. L l release it. There's a last big time portal before the new year. Um, right now, we're, we're actually still in the month of Kislev in the Hebrew calendar. Someone say Kislev. Okay. Kislev. We're actually in the Hebrew month of Kislev. So the interesting thing is um, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Um, has Hanukkah has two months okay this is interesting stay with me so Hanukkah starts in Kislev and then it ends in Tevet someone say Tevet okay I'm gonna write it down here Hanukkah starts in the month of Kislev so right now we're still in Kislev but Wednesday say Wednesday Wednesday uh, is the month of Tevet begins Tevet so um, of course, Kislev, right now, Kislev comes from the root word Kissel, okay? It comes from the root word Kissel, right? And Kissel stands for to flank or to fool, okay? Uh, what does it mean, flank? It means that you've been sideswiped. It means that something's coming from the side or it's fooling you. It's catching you by surprise. Are you ready to be caught by surprise? Are you ready to be surprised in this in this uh, festival in this season, so um, Hanukkah is in the month of Kislev, which means Kissel, which means to be flanked, or God is about to use the foolish ones to confound the wise. Okay, Amen. He's about to fool your enemies. He's about to fool the devil. Okay, <clears throat> but Wednesday is now Tevet. Someone say Tevet. Okay, and Tevet actually comes from the root word tov someone say tov okay and tov in hebrew means good okay all of tov okay so tov in hebrew means good okay so we're moving from a month uh of 
of, of foolish things, of God using the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. We're moving from tov, excuse me, uh, fool to good. So Wednesday starts to that, which comes from tov, which means good. And, um, shatarababa. And it also stands for uh, goodness increasing every single day. Like the menorah that burns bright and every single day as each candle or menorah is added on, the goodness of God begins to shine and illuminate brighter and brighter and brighter. So this new month Tevet really means good will overcome evil. Good will overcome evil. God has overcome the enemy. You will overcome all enemy spirits. Come on, somebody. This is so good. So in this new month of Tov, to Tevet, your light will increase, goodness will increase, and God will cause you to overcome evil. Good will overcome evil. Someone say amen. So that's the time and the season of, of Hanukkah that we're in right now. And we're seeing miracles in Israel right now. We're seeing miracles. Uh, it's incredible that uh, Morocco, okay, Morocco is honestly one of the most staunch Islamic nations on earth, okay? Casablanca is in Morocco. I need to go to Morocco soon. Lord, send me to Morocco. But uh, Morocco just signed another peace treaty with Israel. So we're seeing miracles happen with Israel and with the Jewish people. So now I want to talk to you about why it's called the Festival of Lights and why it's called the Temple of Rededication. But before we go to that, remember Jesus celebrated the Festival of Lights or Hanukkah, dedication. Jesus himself, John 10, 22. Okay. <clears throat> so this is actually a festival of John 10, 22, uh, all the way to John 10, 30. This, in the month of, in the season of Hanukkah, Jesus says, uh, uh, Jesus says, believe in my works. So there's going to be miraculous works. Uh, there's going to be oneness with the Father, and you're going to hear him. Very clearly. So, of course, before Jesus came on the scene, we already know B.C. and A.D. A.D. Uh, means after death. Okay, B.C. means before Christ's birth. Okay, it's isn't it incredible that um, that before Christ's birth and after his death, like you know, Jesus is the central factor of historical timelines and datelines. Isn't that incredible? That's just phenomenal. But about a, a 160 to 250 years before Jesus came on the scene. Remember, if Jesus came here 160 years before he was born, there was a group called the Maccabees. Some say Maccabees. There was a group called the Maccabees. And the Maccabees were this radical Jewish group of believers in Israel that, <clears throat> that, that stood up for what was right, that stood up for truth and righteousness, that took a stand, that said enough is enough. Let me give you some background and story. I love this story. This is one of my favorite stories. Um, all of the Jews, all of Israel... They were not really Israel. Why? Because they had no freedom. Uh, they were being converted to become uh, uh, Seleucids or Hasmoneans, okay? Greek Assyrians, okay? And to be a Jew means that you have your way of worship, you have your way of life, your culture. You honor Yahweh, the one true God, instead of celebrating and, and worshiping idols and multiple gods. Other plethora of pagan gods. So the Jews were not really Jews because they were <clears throat> ruled over the Seleucids, Greek, Assyrian, 
Empire, also known as the Hasmoneans. They were ruled over, so they had no freedom, had no voice, had no freedom to worship. <clears throat> and the Hasmoneans were trying to convert the Jewish people and were raping their women. Uh, the women, the people were intermarrying, interbreeding, which means there's no pure Jew, no pure relationship, no pure family. So <clears throat> imagine the temple, which is the most central place in all of the Jewish faith, to all of the Bible, honestly. That's where God himself dwelled, where the presence, the Shekinah of God dwelled in, in all the earth. If God could live in one place, he lived in this place called the temple in Jerusalem, in Israel. You follow me? However, this temple, the Hasmoneans, the, the people who ruled over the Jews, they overtook the temple and they committed idolatry, child sacrifices. They committed idolatry and sacrifices to their gods. They profaned the temple. They desecrated the temple. They brought in unclean animals, such as pigs, and slaughtered these pigs in the temple of God, the most holy place. It was a complete profanity, profane to God, to the Jewish people. And as the Hasmoneans kept controlling, dictating, you can't worship, you can't open your mouth, you can't sing, you can't gather, you have a curfew. You need to be scared of COVID. You need to be scared of this little tiny virus. You need to obey, otherwise we're gonna shut down your business. You need to suffer. You need to obey or there's contact tracing. You can't worship. No, this is America, this is the United States. We have the freedom of speech, the right to assemble, the freedom of worship, the freedom of press. So as the Hasmoneans were trying to control and restrict and dictate and take away their rights and just be bullies like Governor Newsom and be bullies. Good to see you, Amanda's son. You just flew back from Hawaii yesterday. Bless you. You did such a good job being with us and serving us. Bless you. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause. And as they were being bullies to the Jewish people, all of a sudden, one man named Matit Yahu. Someone say Matit Yahu. One name named Matit Yahu. One na man named Matit Yahu said, enough is enough. I'm done playing games with you. I'm done being bullied by you. I'm not going to take it anymore. I need to do something. I'm not going to worship your idols, your pagan gods. Enough is enough. So one man named Matit Yahu stood up and a whole revolution began. Some say revolution. A revolution began. A rebellion began. And literally, uh, and literally a, the whole group called the Maccabees stood up together. And this began a three-year war. This began a three-year war. But let me tell you, the Hasmoneans, the, the Assyrians, they were the most sophisticated military group on all the earth. The Maccabees, they were just your neighborhood gangsters. They were just your neighborhood thugs. Uh, no order, no organization. They were just bandits, banditos. But the Maccabees came together and they began to fight and war for the next three years. During this three-year war, three-year battle, there was a time frame of eight days. Within three years, during one of the battles, one of the battles, one of the battles of Maccabees only had one day's worth of oil. One day's worth of oil. Now, why do you need oil? You need oil to light up your, your candle, your menorah. Without oil, you cannot have light. You need to burn the oil so that the candle will burn bright. So during the three years of war, in one of the time frames, they only had one day's worth. However, the Lord supernaturally multiplied the one day's worth of oil. 
to not just the second day, to not just the third day, not just the fourth day, not just the fifth day, not just the sixth day, seventh day, but to eight days long until the Jews, the Maccabees, defeated their enemies. That's why Hanukkah is an eight day long celebration. Remember, eight stands for new beginnings. Hanukkah is an eight day long celebration in remembrance to how God multiplied one day's worth of oil. My gosh. One day's worth of oil, God multiplied to eight days until they defeated their enemies. <clears throat> That's why it's known as the Festival of Lights. It's also known as a Festival of Dedication because they took back the temple and they rededicated the temple to the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear some claps going on right now. I hear angels clapping right now. So why is this so important? Because Hanukkah is a feast of multiplication. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about multiplication. I'm going to talk about financial multiplication. Okay, One day's worth of oil. Do you feel like you have one day's worth? Do you feel like you only have a little bit of income, just a little paycheck? Do you feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck, month to month? Do you feel like all you have is just a little bit? God will take your five loaves and two fishes and he will multiply it. He will. He will take your one talent and multiply it to five. He will take your five talents, multiply it to five cities. Thank you, Lord. Shh. Shh. All it takes is one. Matityahu was the one that started the revolution. I pray that you will be that one. I pray that you will be that one that stands up to see a revolution. Boldness, righteousness, standing up for truth. Watch what God does. Some say amen. Wow. I feel like I'm really plowing right now. <laughs> Jesus, thank you, Lord. Wow. It's a wonderful Monday, ain't it? This is day one of five days of Hanukkah miracles. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. So there's three main symbols, three main symbols. Get to see Michelle. There's three main symbols in a Hanukkah that you need to know. Three main, okay? The first symbol is, of course, uh, the first symbol is the menorah. Someone say menorah. What is the menorah? Menorah is the lamp, is the candlestick, okay? So God turns one day's light into eight days light. So are you ready for illumination? Are you ready for vision? A revelation? Are you ready to see? Are you ready for brightness? Doxa, Shekinah glory to shine so bright that you can begin to see all around you. So the first main symbol uh, that's really honored, recognized, it's prophetic as well. Uh, in Hanukkah is the menorah. So say menorah. Someone say, I am God's menorah. You are God's menorah. You are his menorah. And he will cause you to be the lampstand that shines and gives vision to the rest of the world. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> oh, shaka. Number two, the second symbol is the hammer. Someone say hammer. Um, the Maccabees come from the root word Mika or Maka which means hammer. Someone say hammer. Remember the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, my word is like a fire and my word is like a hammer. So in the season of Hanukkah, God is raising up the hammers of God. God is raising up people who will know how to use the word of God, the Torah, and hammer down 
idols and principalities, to hammer down, to break down walls, to destroy idols, to destroy principalities. God's going to use your life like a Maccabee to be a hammer, to put things in order, to destroy, to overthrow, to uproot, to plant. God's going to use your life as a Maccabee hammer. The word of God is a hammer. Amen. All right. Someone say, I am the hammer. Someone say, MC hammer time. It's time for you to have the MC hammer time. <laughs> and number three, the third symbol of Hanukkah is the temple. Someone say the temple is the temple. Okay. Of course, the temple is literally the most holy place uh, in all the earth. It's the, it's the most holy place to all the Jews. It's where God himself dwelled. So in this feast season of Hanukkah, not only will God light up the menorah so that you can see and give greater proper worship, not only will you be the hammer so that you can destroy the idols and the evil things of corruption on the earth, the things that get in the way of your love relationship with God. As you break down, number three, your temple will be cleansed. Your temple will be strengthened. Your temple will be filled with the love, the grace, the oil of God. Your temple will be filled with the presence of God. Someone say, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Did you enjoy today's teaching? This is day one of Hanukkah miracles, people of God. Day one of Hanukkah miracles. I can't wait with, to be with you for the next four days as well. You know, but today uh, was an introduction and opening to what is Hanukkah? You know, um, Remember, it's not one of the biblical feasts, although it's in the Bible. But Jesus himself celebrated and honored this feast. I believe it is a feast of God. And it is a time portal, an open heaven window season for you to thrust forward. If Jesus himself celebrated, then why not you? Thank you, Lord. We're right now in the month of Kislev, which means God's about to flank your enemies, fool your enemies, use the foolish things of the earth. But on Wednesday, we're going to be in the month of Tevet, which means good, and which means good overcomes all evil. God's going to give you boldness like a Maccabee. Boldness enough is enough. This is a, a feast where you're going to have revelation illumination, and you're going to multiply. The one day's worth is going to multiply to eight days. So I'm going to say, I receive my multiplication. Someone say, I receive my prosperity. People of God, tomorrow is going to be day two of five days of Hanukkah miracles. I'm going to believe in finance for financial miracles for you tomorrow, okay? We're going to talk about multiplication uh, and the realm of multiplication, the spirit of multiplication, and we're going to talk about the one day's worth multiplied to eight days, okay? And I'm going to believe for financial miracles tomorrow. Okay, so join me tomorrow, 10 a.m. PST. I'm actually in Hawaii right now, so it's 8 a.m. It's even earlier for me. <laughs> so even while I'm in Hawaii, I need to wake up at 6 a.m. while I'm in Hawaii so I could do this with you. But I believe in the importance of this season, and I believe in the importance of this week. Are you ready for your life to be changed? Father, I pray for everybody watching. Let there be an expectation. Let there be a hunger. I thank you that this feast, this Hanukkah season, is a time of miracles, signs and wonders. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. Shoo! In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty shout. Amen. This is Pastor Ben here. Thanks for joining me today for day one of five days of Hanukkah miracles. I want you to invite some people. Okay, invite some people to this group. Uh, there's only about 30 plus people watching this morning live right now. I know more people will watch the replay. But uh, share, invite people. Thanks for coming. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. PST. I'm excited. These five days are going to be filled with the miraculous. Amen. Bless you.